Hi. In this video, we're going to be looking at some part one sample questions and answers. And for these questions, we're going to be focusing on the topic of fast food. So one of these kind of surprise topics that you might not expect to get asked questions on in the test, but it's one of these things that the examiner is going to do. They're going to kind of try to shock you a little bit with the types of question you're getting, or at least the topic of the questions. You'll see none of them are actually asking you to do anything too complex. Um, so what we'll do is look at the questions first and think about what they're asking us to do. And then after that, we'll go through some sample answers and I'll just explain them a little bit and analyze some of the useful vocabulary and grammar that we're using in the answers. You'll find all of the answers are using this kind of technique of giving nice, clear two sentence answers to each question. Uh, but there'll be some useful things inside the answers that will uh, help us to improve our own answers. And again, once you've listened to mine, it'd be worth trying it out yourself and actually practicing giving these types of answers out loud. Anyway, like I said, the uh, questions we're looking at today focus on the topic of fast food. So let's have a look at these four questions. First one, what kinds of fast food have you tried? So there you go, you can see the focus is fast food. Um, of course, here it's kind of focused on the past, right? So you're expected to maybe use some sort of past tense or something that shows you've done something in the past up until now. So possibly using some perfect tenses. I mean, that's the tense that we have in the question, so we'll probably be following that in the answer. Um, but it's what kind, so you've got to give maybe <clears throat> a clear understanding of that type of question in your answer. The second question is, do you ever use a microwave to cook food quickly? So it's a do you question, kind of looking for a yes or no to begin the answer, of course. But again, it's do you ever do something? So, of course, it's talking about really kind of your routine and something asking you whether you do something or not. Do you ever use a microwave to cook food quickly? So again, it's focused on the topic, I guess, of fast food or really just kind of making food quickly when you're at home. So it's connected. Let's look at the next question. How popular are fast food restaurants where you live? This is a classic kind of IELTS style question for part one. How popular is or are something? Um, <clears throat> so, of course, when you're answering this question, you have to focus on the popularity of fast food restaurants and specifically where you live. But again, really common style of question there. Topic can change, but the style is uh, always very similar like this. Now, if we look at the, uh, the final question, the fourth question, when would you go to a fast food restaurant? So again, you can see it's starting slightly different. Here we've got a when, right? When would you go to a fast food restaurant? So of course, this is asking us usually kind of when would we go? Uh, you can see the word would there and we'll be using that, of course, in the answer. Um, but again, you'll see in the answers, we'll be using certain things from the question in our answer, especially in our direct answer in the first sentence. But let's get on with it. Let's have a look at these answers. And after I give each answer, I'll uh, give a quick explanation of it rather than wait all the way till the end when we finished all four questions. We'll stop on each one and think about why it's a really high level answer. So let's look at the first one. If you remember, the question was, what kinds of fast food have you tried? I guess I've tried most kinds of fast food. It's not that I eat it often, but I've probably eaten at the majority of the popular fast food chains. So there it is, there's the answer there. You can see it's two sentences following the kind of technique that we've looked at in previous videos. 
You can see in the first sentence, we've just focused on answering the question directly. We've shown we're not sure exactly, so we've used the words, I guess, but then we've copied the question a little bit. I've tried. Now, of course, in the question we've got, have you tried? Or what kinds of fast food have you tried? So I've copied that there. I've said I've tried. Now we've combined the pronoun I with the verb have there and we're pronouncing it I've. Now, of course, this is a pronunciation feature that the examiner will be looking for. So I've tried and then here we go. We've copied the word kinds here and we've said most kinds of fast food. Now we haven't given any examples yet of the kinds, but uh, we focused on that word and kind of given the answer clearly. Now, of course, you could, if you wanted, list a couple of kinds, but we haven't done that here. We offer a further explanation in this second sentence, and it's a good thing to do just to show the examiner a little bit more. It's not that I eat it often. So again, here, rather than focus on the uh, present perfect, we've got the present simple. It's not that I eat it often, but, and then we move, right? So we're comparing with the word but here. I've probably eaten. So notice there, again, we're moving back to the present perfect tense and we're using verb three of eat. So eaten, which is quite nice to do here because it shows you have the ability to use different forms of the same verb. I've probably eaten at the majority of. Well, again, it kind of means most, but we don't want to repeat the word most. We want to show this variety in, in grammar, the, uh, sorry, in vocabulary <laughs> that we have, this range of vocabulary <clears throat> in the majority of the popular fast food chains. So again, I add the word chains there to mean like a group of restaurants, so fast food chains. So some nice topic related vocabulary there. Nothing too complex. You can see we're kind of just relying on the, the question to give a nice clear answer. Um, and it's just two sentences, then we stop. There's no need to give more than this really. <clears throat> now, let's look at the second question. If you remember it was, do you ever use a microwave to cook food quickly? No, not really. I wouldn't say I cook food in the microwave. I just heat leftovers up in it. So there you see, it looks like quite a short answer, but it's still following this technique of using two sentences, two clear steps that we're making in our answer. Of course, the first one's very short. Now, I wouldn't always recommend students to do this. I would say generally it's good to make a nice full sentence. But it's all about variety, right? If you give one nice full sentence answer for your first sentence in one question, maybe in another one, the next one, it's nice to give a slightly shorter one. It's just about showing variety that you can do one thing or another thing. You don't have to always rely on the same thing. So no, not really nice and clear and direct. OK, of course, it's a do you question. So I've decided to answer it with no. You could answer it with yes, but here it's no, nice and direct. But we can't stop there. Right. You need to have definitely a second sentence that explains this a bit more. And this second sentence does. I wouldn't say I cook food in the microwave. Well, here we're kind of questioning the meaning of the verb cook. Now, of course, cooking is maybe what you would do in the kitchen when you're kind of making food to eat. Now, of course, I've said here, well, I wouldn't say I cook food in the microwave. I just heat leftovers up in it. Now, this is the phrasal verb to heat up, to make something warm. And it's another verb that would connect with microwaves. And we've shown quite a lot of skill here because, of course, in the question, it says use a microwave. Now, of course, in one part of this answer, I've said cook food in the microwave. And in the next part, I've said heat something up in the microwave. So we've shown quite a, a range of vocabulary there. It's a bit of paraphrasing, which is good. Um, and we've shown what we use the microwave for, right? Maybe not cooking, but just heating things up, which technically wouldn't really be cooking, right? It's already cooked, it's gone cold, and then you heat it up. You'll notice uh, an extra noun here that you might not have seen before, but leftovers. This is a noun. Uh, <clears throat> 
and it means the food that you don't eat, right? Maybe you have a very, very big meal, you can't finish all of it. So what you cannot finish is called the leftovers. So a nice word there, shows a bit of l less common vocabulary, idiomatic vocabulary that native speakers would use there, especially in the phrasal verb too. So even though it's a very short answer there, it's doing quite a lot. It, it's giving quite a clear answer that answers the question, well, and it's using some nice kind of collocation and uh, good use of vocabulary really there. So let's move on to the uh, third question, if you can remember it, was how popular are fast food restaurants where you live? I'd say fast food restaurants are quite popular where I live. People in a city are usually quite busy and they need these types of restaurants to fit in with their hectic lifestyles. So again, you can see two sentences, right? That's what we've got there, two clear sentences. It is much longer than the last answer. So there's always variety within this kind of two sentence technique. And again, the first sentence you can see is relying on the, uh, the question a lot. I'd say fast food restaurants are quite popular. So we're saying how popular, we're answering the question. It's always good to use that adjective after how in your answer with some kind of adverb, quite. I mean, of course you could say very, right? You could say, well, not popular as well if you wanted, if you wanted to give a negative answer. And then at the end we say where I live. Of course, we're just copying that phrase from the question, changing the pronoun from you to I, just giving a nice clear answer, showing we understand the question. It's always good to do this, right? Copying words from the question, it's not a bad thing. You don't always have to kind of obsess with paraphrasing that question that you hear the examiner say. Anyway, we've got a second sentence there, which is just explaining it a bit more. It's kind of asking, answering the question why before the examiner asks why. And I've said people in a city are usually quite busy. So we've used another adjective to describe their lives and they need these types of restaurants to fit in with their hectic lifestyles. Yeah, so you can see here we're connecting the ideas quite nicely, okay? Uh, <clears throat> of course, we're referring to people in the city, which is where I live. And of course, we're referring them uh, to them with the pronoun they later on in the sentence. And of course, these types of restaurants. Well, we're referring to fast food restaurants in the first sentence. So there's some really nice linking here um, that kind of people don't do often enough really I would say is linking with pronouns to refer back to nouns. Great way of linking in these part one answers. Um, and again we've got a nice kind of idiomatic phrase to fit in, right, to work with their hectic lifestyles. They're a nice adjective, the word hectic. I didn't want to repeat the word busy, right, of course we've said people are usually quite busy, well here we've said they have hectic lifestyles. Hectic just means very busy. So again, we're showing some range of vocabulary there. Uh, we're showing we understand the question, we're answering it clearly, no grammatical errors of course, really there as well. I mean we're just relying on the grammar of the question really to give our answer. Right, finally, let's move on to the fourth question which was, when would you go to a fast food restaurant? I'd almost always go as a last resort and avoid them as much as possible. If there's nothing else available to me at the time or place, then I'll pop into a KFC or McDonald's. So there we go. So of course here we've answered the question by kind of copying the question a little bit in that first sentence. I had well, it's when would you go? I had, we, we're kind of combining I and would together there, which is a really natural part of uh, English spoken by native speakers. So uh, a good pronunciation feature there that we're showing. I'd almost always, so we're kind of showing here when, go as a last resort. So a last resort, nice bit of vocabulary there, very common to use these two words together. A last resort, now don't get confused with this, don't think the word resort here means like somewhere you go on holiday. Here it just means kind of <clears throat> your last option, 
right? The last, go as a last resort. It's the final thing that you will do. Fits this context, right? Of not really wanting to do something, but if it's your only option, you will do it. It is your last resort. So I'd go as a last resort and avoid them as much as possible. So this is the honest answer, really, I would avoid going to these restaurants. But if I have no other choice, then I will go. And I explain that in the second sentence here with, a, with an if sentence, right? If there's nothing else available to me at the time or place. Okay, so that's <clears throat> the start of the sentence. And then we have the second part of the sentence here, of course, because it's an if clause. Then I'll pop into a KFC or McDonald's. So got a nice phrasal verb there, nothing too complex, but pop into just means to visit very quickly, right? To go in and come out quickly, to pop into. Uh, also, of course, we've got I'll there, I and will combined, right? Here we're using it hypothetically. So then I'll pop into a KFC or McDonald's and we give two examples there of fast food restaurants that we would visit, but again, it's clearly answering the question, and that's really all we have to focus on there. It's giving nice, clear two-sentence answers. You notice all of them use two sentences. They use the question quite well, right? Especially in the first sentence, kind of using some of the vocabulary and grammar from the question. And the second sentence just expands it a little bit on top of that. Um, and of course, we're trying to link the sentences often with kind of pronouns that refer back to nouns. So there's some good high level English in these answers. They might not look amazing. And of course, like a lot of students will be thinking, well, don't I have to give a longer answer to get a higher score and not in part one. Part one, they're looking for nice, clear, short, simple answers to these short, simple questions. Um, <clears throat> of course, later on in the test, you'll be answering questions where you have to give longer answers in the other parts. Uh, in part one, that's not really the idea, right? You don't have to be giving really long, complex answers. So hopefully that was kind of useful to you and kind of to look at these styles of answers to this kind of topic of question. And of course, we will be doing videos in the future that are covering kind of similar things and uh, other topics in this part of the test. If you have found the video useful, then do remember to click the like button. It does help. And also, if you haven't already, then remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more videos in the future on similar topics. So there we go. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and see you again in the next video.